What we're going to do, it's usually a pretty good time, a little radio history, some stories of the hog and the, how it got its name, a little history of a hog ranch. And there's no, no representative uh, uh, facts at all. It's all uh, part of the strawberry legend. Starting in, uh, probably if there's anybody from Chico here, and that's a probably pretty <laughs> safe guess, uh, then you'd recognize Chico State College before it got uptown and became the University of California, Chico. <laughs> uh, when it was Chico State, we had a little college radio station there way back in the early 60s called KCSC. And it would broadcast uh, to a couple of uh, phone booths and uh, we put it on the cable system. When the guy that owned the cable system didn't have a clue, he just was starting up in business and we came in there and said, hey, we want to broadcast on your wire. And they said, oh, no, okay, fine. It's going to cost us any money? No. Okay, you guys can do it. But that didn't satisfy it because as radio junkies, we couldn't ride around and listen to it. You could hear it at home on the cable, but you couldn't hear it. So, ergo, we started pirate broadcasting. And the bell tower at Chico State was our antenna. <laughs> we put some wires behind that, and we worked for about two and a half, three years at AM at 690 with about 100 watts. It was a, a very successful station because in the early 60s, uh, there was nobody playing rock and roll in the North Valley. There were two stations in town that chose not to, and we did. And we finally got caught when we started making too much money and showing up in the surveys. <laughs> two things happened. The, the guys in town that had all their money invested in these radio stations called the cops, the FCC, and then hired us to come to work for them. <laughs> we, got, we got what we want of. But then that idea has always been with me. I always like to put on a radio station. Radio is a wonderful, wonderful companion. Now, television's going to take that place, and, it, and radio's going to be something entirely different, but radio, the audio way to keep things together, have always been something that, <clears throat> boy, you can have it happen to one nation, everybody listen to the same thing at a time, or you can have it happen in a real small environment like this, where the radio station serves the people that are, it really is right there for you, it takes care of the problems and stuff like that. It, it's always been a rhetorical question for us. Old long hairs from the 60s. God, it's the 20th anniversary of Woodstock. Can you believe that? <laughs> if there had been a pirate radio station at Woodstock, we'd have been a slightly different nation today. But we wouldn't have had the chaos that was there. We could have kept track with each other, but we didn't perceive it quite that way at the time. Uh, the radio types, myself included, that were in on that we didn't look at it. We were looking on the big side. Wow, we'll get this out, millions of people. But sometimes it's thousands of people who make the difference. And so we started the philosophy of doing macro communication. And there is no facility for that. Although we exist as the electronic warp and weave of this wonderful community that comes together a couple times a year. And the other wonderful thing about it is that the media generates right back onto itself with all the live music. We're 17, 18 hours a day now live music created by the people that are here not only performers from the main stage but there's so many ways for you if you're picking singing you go to the breakfast club you can make a station break you can get your stuff in the in the system which is just here putting it on and that's the wonderful part about it because it it creates this thing that doesn't exist anywhere it's uh it's this wonderful little media uh perpetual motion machine it is what we create and what we create makes it what it is. That's the hog zenness that you can see. <laughs> the number one. Of that. <laughs>